to this week's Meals in the Making. There's not really a theme for this week. Both recipes are my recipe that I have come up with, with the exception of one thing. So we're gonna be making barbecue pulled pork sandwiches. You may be asking what's gonna be the bread. You may have seen some talk on your Facebook groups or from your coach about these revolution rolls, which is basically Optavia approved bread. They're correct. So I'm gonna be making those today. I'm a little nervous because I'm using some ingredients that I've never used before. Well, maybe one ingredient that I've never used before. But we're gonna get through this together. The other recipe that I'm making is inspired by something my mom used to make when I was younger. I think I do that a lot on this channel. That's okay. Um, my mom used to make this thing called tater tot casserole. Maybe some of you are familiar with it. Maybe not. I don't think it's a southern thing, but who knows. So I'm making an Optavia approved version of tater tot casserole. But let's get started and get these meals done. For this recipe, you will need one pound of lean ground beef. I'm using 96%. It does count as one leaner portion. If you find something that's a little leaner, that's totally fine too. Four cups of cauliflower rice. Ours is already done, but you can definitely make yours yourself. A fourth a cup of chopped onion. Two teaspoons of minced garlic. Two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. Man, I said that correctly, awesome. Two cups of green beans. Two cups of cheddar cheese. And half a cup of light sour cream. The first thing I'm gonna do is preheat our oven to 375 degrees. The next thing I'm gonna do is brown up my one pound of ground beef. While my meat is browning, I'm gonna go ahead and chop up a fourth of a cup of onion. So this is all browned. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the fat and the grease from it, and then we're gonna add some stuff to it and make a little concoction. Ooh, this is very Halloween themed. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble, fire burning, cauldron bubble. Okay, put that on low while I'm doing this. All right, back into the pan. I've turned my stove top down to low, but I'm gonna turn it back up in just a second. Now, to this meat mixture, to this meat, I'm actually going to add my onion and saute this for about five minutes. So here's my fourth a cup of onion that I've chopped. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit and I'm gonna let this saute. Oh, my onion didn't break all the way apart, it's okay. There it goes, now it's breaking apart. I'll let this saute for about four to five minutes until I'm, my onions are translucent or see-through. Oh, it's actually Saturday, you guys. I never meal prep on Saturdays, but we have a big day today and a big day tomorrow. We had this morning freeze. We were like, we might as well just get it done today. So I'm gonna let this sit a little bit and then we're gonna keep adding to it. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. I hope y'all can hear me over this sizzling. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead now and add my garlic and I'm gonna cook it for an extra minute just stirring it in to mix the flavors. So that's two teaspoons of garlic, minced garlic. Perfect. Oh, it smells amazing. It smells just like it smelled when I was younger my mom would make this. It goes to show you that you can pretty much program approve anything that you want. You just have to look at what you can use and substitute or like if you can lessen whatever it is that you're putting in there. So. so now that that's been cooking for about a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and add my two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce. I have the reduced sodium, but actually you can use regular Worcestershire sauce as well. Just figured it wouldn't hurt to use reduced sodium. Okay, 
Okay, I'm gonna stir that in a little bit and let those flavors mix. put our casserole together. I'm gonna take the meat mixture and put it into the pan. And then we start layering. So the first thing I'm gonna put on is my half a cup of light sour cream. Um, I am using the light, I don't know if I said that earlier. And I'm gonna try and dollop it and then slowly kind of smooth it around after that. Normally in my mom's tater tot casserole, this is where the cream of mushroom soup, cream of mushroom soup would come in, but cream of mushroom soup is not on program, so I had to come up with a different way. Now this is not mixing entirely well, but it's okay because you're not even going to be able to see this part because it's going to be in the middle of the casserole. So just do your very best. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did spray this pan. Uh, I used the Pam olive oil, do whatever you'd like, to make sure it doesn't stick once this goes in the oven and everything starts cooking and you know. That looks pretty good to me. Next, I'm gonna add on my two cups of green beans. Push it around with your hands, make sure it's evenly distributed. And if you have young kids, this is a way to kind of hide those greens that they don't love to eat. Next, I'm gonna add on my two cups of cheddar cheese. I am using reduced fat. You can also use fat-free cheddar cheese. Okay, so before I put the cauliflower on top to finish off and be kind of the crust, where normally the tater tots would be, I wanna brown them up a little bit in the pan that we used to brown up the ground beef and put all the onion and garlic and Worcestershire sauce in. I want them to brown up a little bit, get a little toasty, and then we'll put them on top and put it in the oven. But I wanna see if this works. I will be honest, this is my first time making this recipe. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay, so here's my four cups of cauliflower rice. Um, and I'm just putting it on low and I'm just gonna let it brown up just a little bit just to see what happens We'll see it could be a complete and total bust, but hey, it could also be a hit so So I've browned it up just a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it on top of the rest of our casserole now and throw the casserole in the oven. That's all for this, this recipe, guys. I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Oh my gosh, this smells amazing and the top is starting to brown up. I 
think it's pretty much done y'all i mean you could throw it in a couple more minutes if you wanted to um if you wanted a little more browning on the top but i'm good with this okay so this is actually four servings and a lot of people i think i've gone over this before when i do this i'm just going to cut this in fours pretty evenly but if you want to be super super technical about it you can try and weigh out the meat to five ounces but you've also got to remember that there's stuff on top so it's going to be heavier my best suggestion is just cut it into four anyway so each serving is one leaner three green one healthy fat and two and a half condiments so you will have half a condiment left for the day and your healthy fat is done so enjoy this one i'm so excited to try this Hey everyone and welcome back. Uh, I was gonna try and do all of my meal prepping yesterday on Saturday, but time just got away from me. So today's actually Sunday and I'm gonna finish my meal prepping by meal prepping the revolution rolls for my barbecue pulled pork sandwiches. I'm a little bit nervous, this scares me a little bit, but it's October so I figure I need to do something that scares me, right? Maybe not, but that's okay. Um, let me show you what's needed for these revolution rolls and what's needed for our barbecue pulled pork sandwiches and then we'll get into this. I'm so nervous, but let's get started. Specifically for the revolution rolls, you will need three eggs at room temperature. That's very important. Three tablespoons of light cream cheese, also at room temperature. A pinch of cream of tartar or 1 16th of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. You can also use white vinegar or lemon juice if you don't have cream of tartar. And one packet of stevia. First thing I'm gonna do is preheat my oven to 350 degrees. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do to make my revolution rolls is I'm going to separate my three eggs. My yolks are gonna go in my white bowl, and my egg whites are gonna go in my red bowl. No. No, I got it. Oh, yeah, I'm awesome. Okay, so here's my whites, y'all. As you can see, there's some yolk in there. I'm not a chef. This can show you that if I can do this, anybody can do this. We're gonna try it and see if it still works. Here's my egg yolks. Let's keep going. I'm gonna set my egg yolks to the side and just work with my egg whites for a second. So I'm now gonna add my 1 16th of a teaspoon of cream of tartar to my egg whites. Okay, so now I'm gonna whip my egg whites. Okay, so I have to be honest. This is my second try doing this. I'm gonna go ahead and put the footage in from the first try here. Well, so I tried whipping the first egg whites for seven minutes. I accidentally got a little bit of yolk in them. You've got to make sure there's no yolk in the egg whites. So, my loving fiance went to the store and got me this amazing contraption called an egg separator. It was like two bucks at HEB. It's amazing, folks. Try it. Anyway, so let me show you my 
beautiful egg whites now that they're whipped. They're perfect, perfect, you guys, they're perfect. Now I'm gonna take my egg yolks and I'm gonna take my three tablespoons of room temperature light cream cheese. And also my packet of stevia. And I'm gonna whisk those together. them into my Yolks cream cheese and stevia packet. You'll notice that I'm doing this a little bit at a time. Sharner, what are you doing in here? Get out. Robert, yeah. your son's in the kitchen and he's having an asthma attack. Doing this a little bit at a time and it's thickening up. I slowly mixed this in and I did it a little bit at a time, but it's thickened it up and it, I think it, this is right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put this in six even blobs on a parchment covered cookie sheet and the blobs cannot be touching. So I'm gonna do that now. As you can see, this one eh, kind of mixed in together. So we're gonna hope that, that turns out okay, but this is our first time making it, so it's gonna be okay. I'm gonna throw this in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes until it poofs up a little bit, and we'll see how it turns out. Okay guys, so here are our Revolution Rolls. Oh, they smell so good. So where those two kind of ran into each other and then these two ran into each other, I just broke them apart. They're totally fine. Um, they're very light, very fluffy. This makes three servings. So two equals a serving. And each serving equals one third of a lean and 1.3 condiments, okay? So you'll see with the rest of this recipe that I'm making tomorrow how it all fits together. But um, that's pretty good for some bread, you guys. I'm super excited to try this all together tomorrow. So stay tuned. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday. I'm quickly gonna throw our pork recipe in the crock pot to be ready to go when Ravi and I get home today. I already made our revolution rolls, as you already saw. All we gotta do now is the pulled pork. This is the super, probably the simplest recipe I've ever made, honestly. I'm literally just gonna throw in my pork roast into our crock pot on low until I get home today with a half a cup of water. That's it, that's really it. And then when I get home, I'll shred it and put a tablespoon of barbecue sauce per serving. And this will actually be in the crock pot for about nine hours, but it's okay. So in my crock pot, let me show y'all. There we go. And then I'm gonna power this on low for eight hours. And then once it hits that eight hours, it'll go to warm here. And so then once I get home, I can shred it up and I'll show you that process once I do get home. So. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Okay, so here's our full lean and green meal. We have our pulled pork here. I have just added one tablespoon per serving. There's six servings in that two pound roast. Um, so this whole meal is one lean serving of protein, two and a third condiments, and three green, because I've just got my green beans right here. So enjoy. 